Um, well, I, I would like to, to, mm, to thank you, all the organizers, for, to give me the opportunity to speak here at the presence of a such important international guests. I'm Massimo Martini, I'm a, a deputy, I'm not a sen senator, but my gray hair may be uh, a yeah, right. senator that is... Well, well, and I'm the vice chairman of the defense committee in the Chamber of Deputy in Italy. So, um, as vice, cha vice chairman, I follow many interparliamentarian inter um, conferences, such as Dublin, Athens, Rome and Riga, and I was an, a, a player in the definition of a European defense strategy and to um, try to change the uh, situation that now is really stopped. So my, I decided to have a speech that will, will, that will be very technical because uh, the contingency the of the recent event demanded it. So I think about the Ukraine crisis, the Libyan crisis, and the crisis in the Mediterranean area. Well, I would like to explain why uh, I would like to, to do this, this speech. Uh, to, to explain the work we have done, such as parliamentarians, and which is a path that can change, uh, well, the, 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 the actual position of the Europe in the defense uh, area. Immediately after the end of the Cold War, NATO assigned itself the role of the police of the world. The first test of the role of this new NATO was just the, e the year after the fall of Berlin Wall, the Gulf War in 1999 and 1991, where even if NATO was not involved as an institution, some so some of its main members participate in various ways to the international coalition led by Washington. The first real intervention of NATO recorded three years later in 1995 in Bosnia uh, with the Operation Deliberation Force was conducted under the United Nations Resolution 836 and in the 1999 NATO intervened in Kosovo time this time without a formal UN authorization, but only on the basis of principle of the humanitarian intervention. Then the world was changing again in the 2001 September 11th, and NATO was the first international organization to take action by invoking the first, for the first time the Article 5, which states that any attack of member states is considered an act of, on, on the whole alliance. Since, NATO, then, since then, the NATO was increasingly become a tool at the service of the power politics of the United States. The war in Afghanistan, for example, with the command of the International Security Assistance Force, the ISAF, marked the launch of the first out of area mission, namely an intervention outside the Euro-Atlantic space. Even the conflict in Iraq for the other throw in the, of the Saddam Hussein regime in 2003, although not formally conducted by NATO, in, involved number, numbers of members of the NSC, the Alliance Committee, that pro, to providing an important support. In all this US-led mission, the mindset on which the participation of the European allies was based has always been the same that sees the United States as the leader and the European country with a subordinate gregarious role. It is worth recalling the NATO, unlike the Warsaw Pact, Pact, did not terminate after the fall of the, of the Berlin Wall because it formally, formally, a democratic organization of equals. With the dissolution of a US, the USSR, failed the Soviet hegemony on which the Warsaw Pact was injured, the alliance has no reason to exist. Otherwise, NATO saw equal participation formally of the member states to the organization. Nevertheless, it involved a bond of subjection on the part of European countries, which, is our, which are often pressured to intervene in support of the United States policy against the, their interests and or their benefits in the name of an alliance pact that European countries cannot afford to break up because they depend on the United States for crisis management, even the, to cope the geographically nearest crisis. For example, 
The intervention in Libya in 2011, for example, I say, not only led the catastrophic result in terms of regional stability, but also demonstrate that Europe is not able to fully manage a crisis of that kind alone. Just, kind, just think of the fact that the American support has proved crucial for reconnaissance and target acquisition. France and the United Kingdom had almost exhausted their supply of arms stocks when Gaddafi fell from, fell from power, with the result that Europe has not been able to engage in a subsequent stabilization phase. Thus, the huge strategic role of the, that NATO has played since the end of the Cold War is largely due to the lack of a credible alternative of the European side. Yet the attempt to create a common European defense was launched back in 1996 with the initiative of the ESDI, European Security and Defense Identity, geared to the so-called Petersburg task, namely peacekeeping, peacebuilding, and peace informant operation envisaged primarily for the Balkans and Eastern Europe. The problem at the core of, of what so far has been a failure of European defense lies, lies with NATO. The AS, ESDI was launched during the NATO summit in June 1996 as the European pillar of the Euro Atlantic Alliance, whose purpose was primarily to relieve the United States from the economic burden of supporting a vast military device in Europe. So, do we need a European defense? Well, in a, in a world that is taking an increasingly multipolar structure for minor powers, there are two choices. Vassalage under a greater power that acts as a protector, or creating a stable alliance with minor powers to ensure a critical mass that will allow common dealings with major actors. The European Union is just that, an opportunity for European countries that have independence for large poles of powers. European defense is one of the essential elements to able the sides of this opportunity because it's also an, indip an indispensable instrument for take off a real common foreign policy. This last point will in fact have to diverge from the United States. Just think that how important it is for Europeans to be able to dialogue with Russia as we, or Iran, while the United States may wish to push, us, to push us in a harsh confrontation since they do not have our energy problem, for example. Same for the rest of the Middle East, where European countries might follow much more effective policy that not being tied to the to US. In addition, the Americans were not particularly able to support European allies in handling the latest crisis. Just think of the current situation in Libya or crises such as Mali or Central Africa that were essential a French issue. Moreover, the United States wants to focus on the Pacific and the other containment of Russia. Therefore, we must learn to take care by all our own interests and in the near abroad with, involved, with involvement of appropriate instruments to manage crisis independently. This would also break us from having to pay a tribute to the United States in form of a mission like, the, like that in Afghanistan. The European Union project should not be limited to the mere instabilization of a common market, but of, above all, to creation of a common home for the people of the Europe, of unitary policy entity, albeit consist, consisting of an aggregate of states. Because of, of responsibility falling upon the EU as an active political entity of the international sheen, it needs a cred credible and efficient military tool enabling it to support a common foreign, common foreign policy that is unfortunately st still struggling to take off. If, therefore, appear paradoxical the fact that by virtue of transatlantic partnership, many European countries have four years of invested huge resources in their, in their theaters, in theaters such as Afghanistan, but now they not be able to work, to, uh, to work out, sorry, to a common strategy to deal with crises such as one in Libya.
It is a real problem. We spend a lot of money in outside the, uh, the real problems that are close to us, and we don't have the time to focus with the closest problem we have. It's therefore more than ever necessary that Europe qualifies those military and civilian capacity that make it capable of independently taking crises and treats they emerge in their ge geopolitical space. The first steps towards a credible European defense. Currently, the only military instruments available to European Union, such as, is represented by the battle groups. It is a force composed of contingents of about 1,500 men, provided on, provided on a rotation basis by European partners, and designed for the Peterbest task. These forces are designed to operate in a distant area up to 6,000 uh, 6, kilometers from Brussels, with a response of times with, of five, ten days after the decision of the Council, and, then, and can be sustained for at least 30 days, up to the quarter of a year. It may seem a good starting point, but although battle groups were active from 2007, they were never used and sometimes it has not been possible to ensure the planned maintenance on standby of two battle groups simultaneously. We are therefore, well, away from is the force of 60,000 men deploy deployable in 16 days planned from the objective of, of Elkinson in 1999. The failure of this, the current system of the battle group is mainly Four items, the requirement of the humanity in the Council of the European Union to launch a mission in, within the CSDP, the Common Security and Defence Policy. The difficulties for some countries in coping the, with the cost of contribution with the Baltic groups. Difference in national procedure relating to the authorization of participation and its armed force in mission of the European Union. And at the end, some technical shortcomings that prevent battle groups to conduct certain types of missions, such as the deficiencies in strategic and tactical intelligence. Mm -hmm. To this, we had perhaps a more serious point, the unwillingness of some European country in building a common defense and therefore contributing to these groups. For, the, for this reason, and I'm coming to the actual situation that we study and we promote in the last four interparliamentary sessions. For this reason, we launched the Open Initiative kind of prescient for holding a European debate that goes, that goes beyond, beyond the relationship between the individual governments. Much can be done by parliaments, which represent the more fully the complexity of their rep representative company, people, and they are an instrument of great importance for the passing difference and for the definition of the objective actually shared by the people of the Europe. The first step towards the revival of European defense was made by the European Council in, this last December, in the December of 2013, which reiterated the invitation to improve the rapid response capability of the European through the greater flexibility and deployable Okay, and deployable uh, battle groups, a revision of the Athena mechanism of financing and more flexible procedure. But the main boost came from the Interparliamentarian Conference. Together with our colleague in many parliaments, I, we started engaging an issue after the IPC in Athena in April uh, 2004. And the we start a constructive co cooperation with delegates from, from other countries, and strange, but from Netherlands, from France, from Germany, and from, from Greece also, in, in the beginning of the, of the work. And where a proposal from Netherlands, that the critical e of battle group issue, were finally analyzed and also was made a commitment to find a practical solution. In Rome, we find four points where we need to focus to find the solution, where 
and was uh, how to deploy the battle groups under the mandate of the Article 44 of the Treaty of European Union, how to change the Athena mechanism to respond to concerns expressed by some countries regarding funding, to harmonize the process related to authorize the deployment of the battle groups and the way to employ battle groups within a framework of permanent structure cooperation. I'm going to the end. Uh, I would like to, 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 to explain one thing. We, we, we realized in, in Riga um, a specific proposal of reform that was approved by all parliaments present. Uh, a proposal of reform of the battle group, which foresee to the creation of a tool that could be called Rapid Intervention Corp Corps, configured as a force that joined the battle groups, the purpose of which is to intervene in an emergency and create a condition for a subsequent intervention of the battle groups under, of course, the uh, auspice of the United Nations. And this is a basic um, review of a battle group on a modular basis above the all and the revival of the concept of PESCO. And, okay, I'm going. Okay. Um, I would like to say, I'm sorry for the, the, the long speech, but the, 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 um, creating this, I, I think that is an important past pa step in the European, uh, between the European Parliament, because we create a tools that can left Europe to decide the, his own foreign policy. And in conclusion, is the, the last paragraph. Uh, the, you have the right to the last phrase. Sorry. The last phrase, okay. <laughs> I'm going to the last phrase, okay. If we manage to accomplish this reform project on the European defense, you will not longer call into a question now's role, but you could even start the creation of a genuine common foreign policy, free from a US, US interference, which, is, which in turn we would help to refocus the Union internal policies in a more political and less economic, economical way, op hopefully bringing us toward a Europe of people. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Marshall.